Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Failure Effect. Now, today is a party like you cannot believe yes, because yes. we're hanging out with the one, the only, DJ Shinsky. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Mr. Vibes on Vibes is here. <laughs> <laughs> Karibu sana. First uh, of all, Karibu to Kenya. I know you're just about to leave, but yes. then, you know, welcome to the country and I hope you've had a blast the month that you've been here. Thank you so much. I think I'm yeah. done with Kenyan. <laughs> Kenyans, you guys, I, uh, uh, too much here. Uh, too much. Are you serious? Yeah. Like every day, but it's your job. Yeah, but when a job becomes like... <laughs> 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 yeah. Every day. Hey. Man. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Oh man. Okay, but that sounds that's exactly what a holiday <clears throat> is supposed to be. Yeah. And then you get paid for it. So right, you know. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna kick off your story with <laughs> you know, every time I think about it, I can't stop laughing. Yeah. But like how why did you end up with the name DJ Shinsky? How did <laughs> How did that happen? Tell us. Wow, it's a <clears throat> very interesting story. So, um, um, back in high school in mm -hmm. Hawaii, I went to Highway Secondary School. Shout out to Asewa Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Um, they used to call me. We used to have these nicknames back back in the day. We used to uh, tell ourselves like uh, Broski, Kenvinsky, Deviski, and all that stuff. So my last name is Nyaosi. So they used to call me Nyashinsky. Mm -hmm. And um, it grew on me, and people liked it, and everything like that. So I was like, okay, I like this nickname. So when I went to the America, and then I started DJing, mm -hmm. and I was looking for a DJ name, I looked and looked. I was like, oh, DJ Steve doesn't make any sense. Um, DJ ones and twos, and all that stuff. I'm like, nah. What about Nyashinsky? I'm like, yeah, but Nyashinsky's already taken. Yes. Um, shout out to Nyashinsky. So I was like, what if, what if I? chop off the name and say just chop off the last few letters and be like DJ Nyash. <laughs> 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 hold on, hold on. Before you, before you comment anything, uh -uh. <laughs> let me finish it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this was way back in the early 2000s, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, this is before I actually met some um, <clears throat> the other Africans, Nigerians. Mm -hmm. So I started DJing. I was DJing for Nigerians. And uh, there's one party I was DJing at for a Nigerian party, and this guy came to me, he's Nigerian, he's like, Oga, my guy, you're doing so well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tip you, what's your name, what's your name? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. So I gave him my business card, and business card had uh, DJ Nyash. <laughs> 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 Call DJ Nyash for exclusive mixes. <laughs> uh, he, he took it and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> started laughing. So I was like, why are you laughing? He's like, my brother, are you serious? Are you serious? Are you, this is your name, oh? I'm like, <laughs> I have a terrible Nigerian accent. But yeah. Uh -huh. So he was like, do you know what this means? First of all, are you, are you Nigerian? I'm like, no, I'm from Kenya. Oh, that's why, that's why. Okay, you know what Nyash means in Nigeria? I'm like, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> oh. I don't know if I can cuss. <laughs> Yeah, go on, we'll just cut it out. <laughs> uh, behind, booty, everything. I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we just busted out laughing. So then the next day I had to go back, clear out all my business cards. I had some CDs, mm -hmm. some promo CDs, uh, mixtapes back in the day. I had a DJ Nash reggae mix. I'm like, hey, I need to trash all these things. Yes. <laughs> so, so we sat down with my little brother. Shout out to Kinsley. Uh, we mm -hmm. uh, sat down and like, we got to change his name. So finally, we came up with like, okay, what if we just take the Nya and just keep the Shinsky? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, that works. Right. Yeah. So we took out the Nya. Shinsky mm -hmm. came about. Oh. And the rest is history. But... <laughs> I came to research and find out that actually Shinsky is a is a is a I think it's a Japanese name. Oh, okay. Yeah. That I did not know. I didn't know that until later on, way later on I was I was researching. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. I hope it also does not mean backside. Like does it <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. But yeah. it's a it's a last I mean there are people called Shinsky actually in Japan. Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. 
Wow. I need to go to Japan, maybe. Okay, <laughs> well, we're grateful for small masses because I don't know how I would have survived doing this interview calling you DJ Nyash, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> here we are. Yes. So <clears throat> tell me, when did you move to the US and what were the circumstances in which you moved? So my mom, um, we got lucky. Mm -hmm. She won a green card to the US mm -hmm. back in uh, 2005. So we... I, 2005, I was still in school. In high school, I was doing my Form 4. And uh, so we waited until I graduated from high school uh, in December. And that's when, late December, we moved. Mm -hmm. And all of us, we traveled. My family, it was my brother, um, <clears throat> my brother and my cousin, my mom and my dad, mm -hmm. and I. Okay. We all went to uh, the United States at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your, but one of your sisters had been there for a while before yes, you guys. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. And she's the one who introduced you to the U, U, U.S., the American work culture? Yes, she okay. did. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Violet, my sister. <laughs> yeah, without her, I don't know if I'll be able to survive in the, in the U.S. Because uh -huh. she kept me in line. She made sure that she taught me everything, how the American culture works and everything. Yeah. So as soon as I moved to the U.S., she came, picked me up a month later. Mm-hmm. She used to live in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. I, I landed in Minnesota in December, by the way. Right. This one was a big... Oh, my goodness. First time in, in America and seeing snow. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. It just uh -huh. makes you want to come back. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh -huh. But thankfully, my sister picked me up and um, she immediately <clears throat> put me to work. Mm -hmm. I was rushed into work, uh, started working. I went registered for school, mm -hmm. everything was like this and this and this. You do. Like there was no time to waste. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Without that, I don't I don't know if I'll be able to be who I am right now. Okay. Yeah. So school, what were you studying? I did uh, electrical engineering. That's vastly different from what you're <laughs> doing right now. I suppose if your equipment breaks down, you would know how to fix it. Oh, yeah. Is this an advantage? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. But besides that, like it's, it's not what you are doing right now. So... Why electrical engineering? I think I had a passion for engineering mm -hmm. from way back in high school. Yeah. Yeah. I used to like learn, I used to wonder how, how does uh, power come from the power plant, mm -hmm. get produced, come from the power plant and just transfer it all the way to the, to the house mm -hmm. and reach to your light bulb. I was like, just wondering how do they do that? I used to like open up uh, sockets. And just figure out, okay, this wires and this, and, and get shocked. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I used to open up electronics. I used to love just learning about how things work. Mm -hmm. um, so going to, to college, um, I decided this is the passion. This is the path I want to follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I started doing. And um, I think I, I loved it. I love it, many of it. Like I learned a lot about um, how technology, electronics, and um, how they're pretty much engineering, how everything works. And the good thing about electrical engineering is that you'll find an electrical engineer in any kind of field. Right. Because you need power. You yes, need electricity. Yes, yes, Yeah, so that's why I liked it. Okay. <clears throat> um, so this is a four-year degree yeah. that you're acquiring. And mm -hmm. did you work this job? By the way, what was the job that your sister got you into? <laughs> I, so I told my sister, man, um, you know, I'm an introvert. I don't, I just need a job where I can just go and hide myself. Mm -hmm. So most of the Kenyans who were there at that time, mm -hmm. um, they used to work at uh, manufacturing plants or um, uh, nursing homes mm -hmm. or um, some other jobs that didn't require like you talking to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I wanted to go to a manufacturing plant. Okay. Just go do my my stuff, go home, don't have to interact with people. But she's like, now, nah, you need to do this job. So the job was uh, customer service, and uh, it was for a call center for a phone company. Uh -huh. It was At that time, it was called um, Nextel. Yeah, Nextel. Mm -hmm. Right now, they got, brought, they got um, bought by Sprint, and Sprint bought them, so now it's T-Mobile. For those people who know T-Mobile, what it was. Right. So, yeah, back in the day, it was a phone company. as my customer service. So, my job was to answer phone calls eight hours a day. 
And you're an introvert? Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so I can imagine. Hey, uh-huh. man. In fact, actually, I lied on my resume mm-hmm. that I had experienced. Oh. Because okay. <laughs> without, without, without that, I couldn't get that job. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So <clears throat> um, it was nerve wracking because now I had to actually talk to people. Mm-hmm. And me with my heavy, heavy Kenyan accent. Right. And Americans get touchy about that. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a, a definitely an experience to never forget. Because uh, people, they would, first of all, they don't understand you. Mm-hmm. You're talking English, but certain words comes out in a different way mm-hmm. that they don't understand. Right. So it requires a lot of patience. Mm-hmm. And uh, thankfully... Uh, thankfully, um, I got the hang of it because uh-huh. I'm a quick learner. But man, it was it was alright. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I guess there must have been something. This this was clearly a very uncomfortable situation for yes. you. Yes. Mm-hmm. But then you did it, and you came out with lessons. Yes. Okay. What did you? Uh, first of all, I learned how to <clears throat> to communicate with the. Um, Americans, because mm-hmm. they, um, they have a different accent, different lingo, everything they say. And um, also I learned how to do customer service. Customer mm-hmm. service is very important to any kind of business. Mm-hmm. So um, that that was really a big, big lesson for me that I still use even for my DJing right now. Okay. I have to talk to clients, I have to talk to um, uh, customers, uh, fans, and, uh, you know, corporate people and everything so I have to present myself in a way that mm-hmm. um, they they can relate to me and they, I can understand them and you know just basic customer service okay and I, I'm grateful for that okay yeah. we're gonna get back to that little point because mm-hmm. it's I think it's a very key part in yes. the very beginning of your journey almost like your soul journey or mm-hmm. your life journey yes um, but then back to after you finish the four year degree mm-hmm. What happens next? After the four-year degree, I immediately went to um, to the workforce, mm-hmm. started doing engineering. So I worked for this company. It's an oil and gas company. Mm-hmm. And um, I did it for about two years. Uh, the position was, uh, it's called a MWD, which means Measurement While Drilling Engineer. Okay. So pretty much what he's saying, like in the title, you take measurements while they're drilling. Okay, okay. Yeah. So my job was to um, go out to the oil rigs, go out to the site. It was like really remote. Yeah. If I can compare, let's say, Wajir or <laughs> Masterbit. <laughs> yeah, and you stay there for months in a trailer. Okay. Yeah, and uh, there's nothing around just the oil rig. Mm-hmm. So we go there for months. My job was to take uh, measurements while they're drilling, make sure they, they follow the plan for, um, they, they already have a plan how they're going to drill the, the site mm-hmm. and to get to the oil. So my, my, my job was to make sure everything's going okay. Mm-hmm. So um, I did that for, for, for two years. And then... Um, oh, wait, hold up, hold up. Mm-hmm. That just sounds absolutely boring. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why did you want to sequester yourself, you know, in the equivalent of Marsa Beach, for example, yeah. very far away from your family, mm-hmm. your friends, I assume. What? Why Why this job? Um, I think it was... Um, I think I, I just... Uh, I guess at that time, mm-hmm. that was my... Best option, I guess. Okay. Because um, I did have, before I graduated, I did have some offers. I had a job offer in um, this engineering company. It was very, very, it's actually the job which I really wanted to work at. Mm-hmm. But however, they were located in Colorado, which means I had to move from Houston to Colorado. Right. And at that time, I was staying with my family. I wasn't sure if I wanted to move. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't comfortable moving, so I was like, eh, let me hold off and let me see if I can get some more offers. Mm-hmm. Then when it came down to it, before I graduated, all the offers I was getting didn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. This one made sense because it was based in Houston. Yeah. And um, I'm an open-minded guy, so like, well, mm-hmm. we'll see. I mean, 
it's still engineering. Yeah. Yeah, let me see what yeah. I can just try it out. Mm-hmm. Maybe I like it, maybe not. Mm-hmm. So, but when I started working, then I started finding out like, oh, yeah, you're going to be away from home. Uh, sometime, there's one time I went to, in December, they took me to North Dakota, close to the border of Canada. Ooh, sounds and, very and the cool. US. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in December. Uh. So all you see is snow. So they, they, they usually give you a truck so that you can, after after you're done with the shift, you can go in town and everything. Mm-hmm. So the project ended up having some um, complications. Right. So it was supposed to be like a, I don't know, a four-week job. Ended up being three months. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ay, ay, so ay. I spent New Year's there. I spent Christmas there. Oh. Um, yeah. My birthday also in December 27th, I spent it there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in the snow, in the trailer, uh-huh. with strangers, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. But we made the best out of it. Yeah. I did make some money, though, but... Yeah. Okay, but that also sounds because oil rigs don't sound like places where you find like a lot of women, which means therefore that there isn't that much to do in terms of social life. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could be wrong. Is this what it was like? No, it's it's absolutely right. I mean, there's very very the percentage of women is very very few. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I understand it's a, it's a job that requires um, you know isolation. Yeah. And. Hours and hours of work because I used to work twelve hours a day. Wow! Uh, mm-hmm. From six p.m. to six a.m. Mm-hmm. So I can imagine it's not easy to, you know, do that kind of job. Okay. So um, and um, the closest places where you can go and socialize is like an hour drive. Mm-hmm. Like you have to drive way, and it's not like Nairobi, Kenya, hour drive. Yeah. It's American style and hour drive, which is like far, far, far. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I can understand it's not easy for, and not not even just women, just anybody. To yeah, do. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And in the interim, because the way that you DJ is, it comes from years yeah. of practice. Mm-hmm. So did this fit into your life at this point in time? At this point in time, we had to put it in the back burner for a little bit. Okay. But I still had the passion, still had, uh, I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. So every opportunity I'll get, I'll be practicing. I used mm-hmm. to carry my little turntable as a controller, small controller pioneer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to carry all the time. So every time I'm off from work in the trailer, I just go to the bedroom and do pra- some mixing. Yeah, yeah. and practice. Yeah. Where did your love of DJing come from, though? DJing came from, uh, I think, if I can trace it back, my family... We love music. Mm-hmm. Like we used to listen. We lis- we still listen to music all the time. My parents, you know, they listen to uh, back in the day, Zilezo Pando, Lingala, yeah. Yeah. Rumba, Gospel. Um, my I have three older sisters. Mm-hmm. All of them used to listen to like different kind of like soul, mm-hmm. R and B, hip hop, nineties hip hop, and all that. So growing up in that environment, kind of tune me into like listening to music a lot okay yeah and i found out that music is it's like um how can i put this it's something that i go to and i feel like i need to just relax and tune in to myself and everything Mm -hmm. it's it's my go-to place where i want to feel safe okay yeah all right so with that background when i went to high school now I started to get into interact with other guys mm-hmm. and they used to love reggae music and all that. So we used to love music and I remember one time in high school, this my classmate, we used to compete all the time. We used to do this like at the end of the week, we come up and we come with a whole bunch of CDs mm-hmm. and he'll be like, Bam, I got this new CD, got this new music, what you got? Uh-huh. I'm like, uh yeah. I got this, yeah. <laughs> so we used to compete, like, who got the best music, yeah. who has, has the latest music and all that. So um, that also, like, just fueled the music side of me. And also, in addition to that, like, the Matatu culture played a big role. Right. Matatu, okay. like, I used to um, um, go, 
write them my tattoos all the time from high school to to home. Where was home? Home is Buruburu. Okay. Yeah, phase three. Uh-huh. Yeah, so <laughs> Buru and Yaji. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So I used to, um, you know, traveling from, from high school to home, we used to just l- love waiting for the best matatus to come. Yeah. With the best music, the graffiti, everything. Just the culture itself. We mm-hmm. just, yeah, and, and you just want to sit down there and just listen to the the bass and everything and listen to a DJ mix. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I was like, this is it. I love how the DJ can take you to a different dimension and just like mix this and song and this song and it just flows. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I like this. I like this. Uh, first of all, shout out to DJ Simple Simon. Ah. Yeah, Black Supremacy Sounds uh-huh. back in the day. They used to like give out mixes all the time. So that's where my love for making mixes actually came about. Like that influence, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a big influence in mine. So um, that just sparked the interest. And when I came to the States, I was like, I need to learn how to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, I started practicing. I got this software, DJ software, with all the music I collected back in high school. Right. Now I'm just practicing with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, slowly by slowly, practice, um, watching other people, learning from other people. Um yeah, it just it came to be. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, music software. You didn't have any, you know. Yeah. Okay. How? Mm. What's that like? Because I hear a lot of, there's a lot of controversy in mm. the DJ community about who's a better DJ. The yeah. one who can use, the one who uses an actual mm. turntable yeah. or, you know, the one who uses the software. So yeah. what do you think? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big argument in the DJ community. Yeah. Because people will be like, um, especially the OGs. Yeah. They were like, uh, if you don't know how to use vinyl, mm-hmm. which was back in the day. Yeah. If you can't mix with vinyl, if you can't scratch with vinyl, mm-hmm. then not real DJ. Yeah. Um, however, I understand their point. Yeah. Because the authenticity of DJing is like, when you look at a DJ, you want to see the vinyls. You mm-hmm. want to see him. Yes. With the headphones and mixing and everything. Not just in a computer. Yes. Typing you. That's the authenticity of, of it. I understand that. However, technology. Yeah. Yeah. It can be technology. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's like saying, uh, you're not a real driver if you don't know how to drive stick shift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it's good to learn how to drive stick shift, but automatic will still get you the same way. Okay. I am guilty of accusing people who can't drive my Ah, you see. <laughs> I am one, one of them. I am. <laughs> oh, man. Mm-mm. I know. I'm sorry. Mm-mm. But anyway, okay. Yeah. So back to this job that yeah. takes you very far away from home for yeah. months on end. What mm-hmm. did you do? Did you quit? Did you stay? Did you, what, how, how did you exit? Um, well, I kind of got comfortable. Mm-hmm. So I was just, you know, going here and here, traveling across the country, yeah. wherever they take me. And then... Um, there was a year that, I can't remember which year, um, the oil prices went down mm-hmm. globally. So all the oil and gas companies got affected. They started laying off people. And unfortunately, I was one of them. Oh, so I'm they so had to sorry. restructure. And since I was still new to the company, mm-hmm. yeah, so okay. they laid me off. Mm-hmm. Um, I, well, it was, um, it was a bit rough. Because now all the income is gone and I'm like, now what? You know, Mm -hmm. I want Mm -hmm. to apply. Okay, let me apply for another job. But I found it was a bit difficult Mm -hmm. to get the job which I wanted to get. I wanted to go back to electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. But um, I realized that engineering jobs, they either want you when you're like green, like let's say from high school, Mm -hmm. no, from college. Mm -hmm. Either about to graduate or just graduated. Or you have experience. So I found out that I didn't have experience in electrical engineering. Okay. I had experience in this mm-hmm. other field. Mm-hmm. But this other field is not hiring at the moment mm-hmm. because, you know, of the oil crisis. Yeah. So it was, um, I was stuck in the house. Okay. Yeah. For how long? <laughs> For about a, about a year. Oh, wow. Mm. So, okay. What, what were you going through emotionally and financially as well? Financially, thankfully, I was still DJing. Okay. So I was able to get some gigs here and there, but that's just on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And they were not paying as much Mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, I wasn't making as much at that time. 
Um, good thing my parents were still in Houston, so mm-hmm. I stayed with, stayed with them. I was uh, they were, I was trying to help with the bills and everything. Still looking for a job, and uh, it wasn't easy at that time. Also, at that time, also my mom was sick. Right. She, she had to do a surgery, so mm-hmm. uh, in addition to that, I, you know, I had to take care of her. My, my dad was also there taking care of us. So there was a lot of family stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Then also the financial side was a bit stressful. Yeah. So the house was a bit stressful. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, but uh, thankfully it didn't last that long and we were able to manage Okay. getting through it. Okay. Yeah. So I am assuming after this, after you do your year, did you then become a DJ? I'm a, what happened? Um, After the year? So the year I was just DJing and... um. Thankfully, the DJing part of it, I was DJing when I was still in school, while I was still in work. So it was slowly building, mm-hmm. but I didn't put enough effort for it to grow okay. as much as I wanted to. Okay. So it was just like, oh, it's just a hobby, extra mm-hmm. money. Mm-hmm. Um, but that year, kind of like, I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. Mm-hmm. Let me take it seriously. So... But I still needed income. So after a year, finally I got a job, another job um, in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And um, when I went to that job, I was still DJing on the weekends, but I was still taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. Doing private events, doing club events and everything. So, um, yeah, I think um, in between that, getting that job, it, it was a good job. However, it just felt like I still need to do more with my DJing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's still more I can do. Because I guess within that year, I was, um, it kind of sparked the interest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was the the essential genesis of this could actually be a career. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then you've moved away from home. Like, okay, so I have a question because it seems to me your gigs used to, at the time, concentrate in the Houston area. Yes. Why, why wouldn't you play wherever you were located at the time? Or in Dallas? For example, yes. Okay. Um, I used to get a, some gigs here and there. Mm-hmm. I think also my name wasn't recognized as much, my mm-hmm. brand. Okay. So it's a bit tougher to get other gigs from, you know, different cities. Okay. Yeah, so it was a bit of a challenge. Mm-hmm. I can say... Where kind of like the moment where my brand started now to get to different states where it was, we have this big um, f- function. It's called uh, Kenyan Reunion Parties. Yes. I'm sure yes. you've heard of it. Yes. Yeah. Back in the day, it used to be huge. Uh-huh. Like we go to different cities mm-hmm. on the holidays and all the Kenyans from all over the states, yeah. the different kind of states, they'll come there and... A lot of people, I'm talking about 5,000 people. Wow. Yeah. So I knew that that was a place where I can now go and connect with the rest of the Kenyans on the diaspora. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was this Rugby Sevens um, games that are happening. Yes. Yeah. It was very, very huge in Vegas. Mm-hmm. So I decided, like, I need to go there and be present, just connect with people and see if I can get my name out there. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I used to go pay for my flight and hotel, go there, go to the stadium. I have a whole bunch of CDs. Yeah. Mixtape CDs. And just stand outside, wait for someone to come. I can, if I can recognize African, I'm like, it's Kenya. I'm like, yeah, okay. Hey, hi, my name is DJ Shinsky. This yeah. is my mixtape. Please listen to it. Yeah. You know, let me know what you think. I got my business card here. If you like it, contact me. Mm-hmm. I did that for almost two years, just hustling, just trying to give people my my mixes and stuff like that. Because in my back of my mind, I knew the way, only way to, for me, my my name to get out there is through my mixes. Like mm-hmm. if they know how I mix, yeah. So eventually, people start now to get to know me a little bit more, and uh, now uh, I started traveling mm-hmm. a little bit, not okay. as much as I'm doing right now. Okay, but it was once in a while. Okay. Mm. All right. So before we get back to the job in Dallas, because you're about to tell us that, I just want to log. We've got one job that made you uncomfortable. Mm. 
the second job that made you really lonely <laughs> and cold. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then the third job, what happened here? The third, third job. So in Dallas, I used to work for an aerospace company. So I used to design um, pretty much the electronic side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a bad job. I think it was just, um, I think in the back of my mind, I felt like DJ, I could do something more with DJing. Yeah. So it was kind of distracting me from actually like being comfortable at that job. Okay. Because, you know, the, once you do that job, most of the time it becomes repetitive, becomes mm-hmm. monotonous. Mm-hmm. And I think also in the back of my mind, I, 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 what I enjoy the most is um, two things. It's, Finding out like how things are made from scratch to finish, mm-hmm. and with engineering, sometimes you don't get the opportunity because they put you in different departments, so you can't really. Sometimes you don't interact with other departments. Right. And second of all is the direct impact of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like let's say, let's say um, for DJing, I enjoy it when I'm playing and I see the reaction for the from the crowd. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, okay, I'm doing something. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when they come and tell me, hey, you made my night. That was good. You know, thank yeah. you so much. I, I love that feedback. I love to know, okay, my work is what I'm doing. I get the direct feedback. Mm-hmm. With uh, engineering, sometimes it's very hard to get that because you don't know where your design is going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or you don't know where your work is going. It's just being put in the, um, what you call it, the... The uh, what's that name? It's like your your. It's coming up, yeah. Okay, <laughs> it'll come up, yeah. But it's been uh-huh. putting uh, this. Um, I want to say manufacturing line, like it's. Ah uh, yes. Yeah, it's here. This is what you do. Mm-hmm. Transfer it over to the pl- mm-hmm. next place. It's an assembly line. Yeah, assembly line. That's yes. what I'm looking for. Yeah. yeah. But um, you know the the employees, the management, they're good to me. I mean, the environment was comfortable. Yeah. Um. So I can't really complain about it. I think it was just my mindset was in a different place. Okay. Yeah. All right. So did you quit? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Eventually I quit. So um, this is what happened. My, at that time, my name was starting to get out there, mm-hmm. doing the mixes online and stuff. So uh, this guy from London, his name is... Uh, one of the promoters from London, his name is Tom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he called me and he's like, um, I need you to come to London for a show. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. Yeah, sure. First time in London, I, was, I got excited. So right. I went to my boss and was like, you know, I need to, I need to take some time off. My boss was like, uh, yeah, we'd love to, but it's a, it's a bit busy t- today, uh, this month. So we can, uh, you know, we can give you the time off that you need. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. I got frustrated. I got frustrated. I was like, Mm-mm. if I miss this opportunity, uh-huh. I don't know when I'm going to get it back again. Right. So I thought about it and uh, I was like, okay, well, let's do this then. It's about time. <laughs> 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 this was the catalyst for me to just like, okay, I think I'm done. Mm-hmm. So I went back to my boss. I just gave him the letter. Yeah. I'm like, um, thank you for the opportunity, but I think I'm, I'm moving on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was, uh, it was a bit sad, but uh, he understood. Okay. Yeah, so quit my job. Now, quitting my job, mm-hmm. meaning I don't have any other source of income, like right. a strong source of income, which means I can't pay my rent. Okay, <laughs> okay. So I decided I was living in Dallas, so I was like, uh, okay, so... Oh, wait, hold up. But you did do London. You went to London. Yeah, I went to London. Uh-huh. I went to London. I was supposed to be for a week. Mm-hmm. Ended up extending my stay for a whole month. Wow! And it wasn't it was one of my best experiences ever to uh-huh. to travel outside America. Yeah, actually, it was my first time traveling outside America besides Kenya. Okay. Yeah, so it was a wonderful experience. The uh, the host Tom and mm. his family they were very very good. Uh, they hosted me for a whole month. Um, imagine a complete stranger just yeah like hey just just stay in our house you uh-huh. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it was one of 
met so many great people over there. Um, got to see a lot of things, and uh, it kind of really sparked my interest in traveling as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I came back, um, I didn't have a place to stay because now uh-huh. I had to uh, cancel my lease. Okay. Yeah. Because you were jobless. I was jobless. Yeah. I didn't know a lot of people in Dallas, so I had to. Dis- I was like, let me just go back to Houston because mm-hmm. I know people there. Yeah. Packed mm-hmm. everything, put in the storage. Mm-hmm. And um, came back home. I'm homeless. What year was this? This is back in uh, 2019, I okay. think. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, 2019. So I was like, okay. So I talked to my friend. He was like, he can host me for a little bit. So I slept in the couch uh, for a few weeks. Thankfully, I found one of my friends, um, very, very good friend. His name is Kevin. He hosted me in his house and told me hey just come I have an extra room we can be roommates you just you know pay me a little bit and yeah, yeah. you should be good until until you get yourself situated I got you okay yeah and I'm thankful for that he, he really came through oh <laughs> shout out Kevin <laughs> Kevin shout out to you <laughs> uh-huh. so um yeah so I was like okay at least I know I have a place to stay so now my job was now to just go hard and Right. Get gigs, DJ, promote my brand and everything. So mm-hmm. I started doing that. And then COVID hit. Ooh, <laughs> child. And yeah. you know, <clears throat> in the US, it was really bad. The restrictions were really bad. Yes. So no gigs at all? No gigs at all. Everything was shut down. Um, yeah, everything was shut down. Like mm-hmm. you, can't, you can't even, even get into regular jobs. You can't even do that. Mm-hmm. So now I have no income, uh, no gigs coming in. I can get a job because yeah. most of the jobs are sh- shut down. Mm-hmm. Did you get yeah. unemployment benefits? No. Okay. Um, unfortunately, since I was unemployed, okay. according to the government, uh-huh. um, yeah, I couldn't qualify for that uh, unemployment checks. Mm-hmm. People used to get almost two thousand dollars a month mm-hmm. like i think it was 600 a, a week right yeah it was 600 a week so i couldn't get that so now i was stuck i didn't know what to do mm-hmm. i was considering even doing like uber mm-hmm. delivery stuff like that yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah. that was big right there yeah uh then thankfully club covid came in there online yes djing yes djing online on Facebook, uh, mm-hmm. shout out to the, what was it called? The 254 Diaspora DJ. Yes, yes. The group formed by uh, one of my friends, his name is Frank. Mm-hmm. And the whole crew, they started providing this platform for DJs to come and um, showcase their skills to people. Right. And it quickly grew. P- DJs came in and started DJing. Mm-hmm. The audience grew. like They, they had almost 100 plus thousand. Wow. Uh, members. Yeah. It was the only way we could party. I mean, yeah. You know. That's the only way people could party. And mm-hmm. Yeah. So, thankfully, Kenyans, they love music and love to party and love to connect people through music. Yeah. So, I don't think any other culture will, would have done that. Mm-hmm. I think Nigerians did it, but it wasn't as successful as Kenyans. Mm-hmm. Where we come and support the DJs, we listen to music and also we connect with people on the chat. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it, it came about and and uh, that was one of my big breaks because it was an outlet for me to come and showcase my skills mm-hmm. to the rest of the world now because we are connecting through through Facebook. Mm-hmm. And um, I started performing there and people started to know who I am. Yeah. The Kenyan audience started to know who I am. The All the other... Um, countries where they're listening from they started to know who I am and uh, thankfully and I'm grateful for people who started now tipping yeah. the DJs because that really helped us a lot to get through all that because there's no income for us mm-hmm. so we started they started tipping here $10 here $5 here and Pesa here mm-hmm. it really helped a lot Right, because yeah. you can't make um, money off mm-hmm. copyrighted, already copyrighted content. So yeah. 
even if you start a YouTube channel, which you did, mm-hmm. you're still not going to monetize. That. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, if it's copyrighted, especially music, mm-hmm. um, you can't really monetize or make money from it. Mm. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so far we're up to three jobs now. Um, uh, the first two, we know how they've gone. Yeah. And then the third one was just not, I mean, you know, it was okay, but it wasn't quite hitting the spot. Yes. Um, did you have in the year before uh, COVID hit, did you have any regrets about the jobs that you had taken or the job that you had just left? Did you, what were you going through? Um, yeah, I did have some regrets mm. that there was things I should have done in, in college mm-hmm. that I didn't, I didn't do. Or I just like, um, you know, it's not important. Mm-hmm. Things like um, doing an internship. I didn't realize how that's very, very crucial for engineers. Right. Yeah. Um, if you can do an internship, if you, I give you anybody advice. Like if you're doing engineering and you're in college, try your hardest to get an internship. Mm-hmm. Or they call it a, a co-op. Mm-hmm. Where you can just go work for the summer, get that experience, get to network with the the companies, yeah. professionals, because those people will help you eventually get a job mm-hmm. if you do well, if you connect with them well. Um, a lot of my friends did that, mm-hmm. and they ended up getting jobs which actually they wanted, okay. and they got offers like multiple offers like quick. Um, so. When you go to a company and the resume, and they compare someone who has an internship than someone who didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. They're like, they'll take this guy. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's one regret. I, I, when I look back, I'm like, hmm, I should have done that. But yeah. yeah. It's okay. Because that could have placed me in a different position mm-hmm. to get some really... Uh, more multiple offers for jobs. But you see, if you had done that, then right now you'd be being an engineer instead of being the DJ formerly known as Nyash. So <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I regret it for my engineering side of it. Mm-hmm. However, I think everything happened the way it's supposed to happen. Okay. Uh, the... I won't say, okay, let me just take it back. I won't say it's a regret. Yes. I think it's a learning lesson yes. that I can pass along to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I did that, let's say let's say if I took a job in the Colorado, mm-hmm. I would have been an engineer, maybe based my place in Colorado, mm-hmm. um, start a family there and just live there and yeah. just be an engineer and that's it. Okay. The DJing will be probably... Like a hobby, okay. and just do on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, I think everything happened for a reason. All those steps guided me through my journey to become who I am right now. Even with engineering, like like in the beginning, you said like it's a totally different thing. Yes, but it's actually connected. Okay. Yeah. How so? So, engineering taught me how to solve problems because okay. that's the main core of engineers. They solve problems. Yes. They know how to, um, if you have a problem, you know the step-by-step you need to take to resolve that issue. You're very resourceful. You can research, you can do all that and stuff. Okay. So applying that to my life, Mm -hmm. especially even the DJing part of it, whenever there's uh, problems, I come up with solutions. Like that's my engineering side just comes in. Uh Whenever I need to speak to uh, clients, that's my customer service background coming to me. Right. So... Doing being resourceful, where I can know now, now I need to know how to get um, where to get the new music from, where I need to connect with people, where can I get this equipment, or um, being very technical with stuff. That's the engineering side coming out, right? Yeah, and um, I'm grateful that I'll, I was able to go through that journey. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really helping me like move even further in my DJing career because mm-hmm. um, of that. And um, that's why I, I, 
that's why I feel like everything just comes through. It's connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, every lesson that I've learned from, from way back, I started this journey. It's just, it's, it's an addition to where I'm at right now. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you, mm-hmm. um, this is a problem that I've always wanted to ask a DJ directly. How do you solve the problem of a non-responsive crowd? <clears throat> Non-responsive <laughs> crowd, man. <laughs> uh, it happens a lot in okay. the industry. Mm-hmm. Even to you? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Even till, till today. Uh-huh. Uh, till today. I mean, you're going to get you're gonna get a crowd which just, they're not responding. Yeah. Like you try, you try, like, uh, yeah, they're not moving. Mm-hmm. Um, either they're just in a different vibe. Mm-hmm. Maybe the environment, maybe the club is set up is not conducive for for them to move right um for me i'm used to people seeing people like dancing moving sh- nodding their head like this like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like yeah i got you mm-hmm. i got you i got you when i come to kenya oh <laughs> it's oh boy are we <laughs> peculiar <laughs> very peculiar <laughs> okay first of all in america the difference is in america like most clubs have dance floors yeah Yes, this this is true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, right now it's, it's changing in America, but now we have sections and stuff. But most clubs, we have dance floors. Mm-hmm. And in, in America also, we are limited in the time that we can party. Mm-hmm. So most clubs are open from 10 to 2. Okay. Meaning that Africans will come at 12. Uh, yes. <laughs> of course. Because it's what we do. Yeah, it's <laughs> standard. Yes. So they have only two hours to party. Mm-hmm. So they have to make sure they make the most of it. The most of it. So yeah. they'll come. If the vibe is good, they'll dance. They'll have a good time. Yeah. And then they leave. Okay. Kenyans, we have, I don't know, clubs. Do they close? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, in fact, like on Saturday nights, they'll yeah. often go all the way into Sunday service. And then, you know, guys go home at 6 p.m. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Because... The time I've been here, I've never seen a club close mm-hmm. or even have, you know, in America, they, 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 once, it, once it's two o'clock, mm-hmm. actually once it's one forty-five. Okay. The bouncer, the security will come in like, we need mm. to be shutting down in a few minutes. Okay. So say last call and uh, tell people to close their tabs. Mm-hmm. All right. Two o'clock. Everybody get out. Everybody oh. get out. Yeah. So everybody's like, ah, okay. Here, I've never seen that before. And it's very peculiar. Mm-hmm. So now, people, I've noticed now Kenyans, are, they're more comfortable. They can party until whenever they want to party. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's clubs, there's just tables and tables and chairs. And uh, there's food. Mm-hmm. So people are not in a rush. Yeah. And in addition to that, we're just used to sitting down. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. that's true. And socializing. Yeah. And just drinking. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I'm just used to like seeing people like up and mm-hmm. dancing. So there's very few clubs over here that do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when I find myself in a place where like there's just sitting down and everything. And I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm not seeing people on their feet. Mm-hmm. Not dancing. <sighs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Does does it make you, f- I mean, it must make you feel some kind of way. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I compare DJing like... <laughs> I compare DJing like uh, a guy trying to hit on a girl. Mm-hmm. Mm. You have to pull up, pull all your game, right, to get attention to this girl. Like yeah. you just want to talk, talk to her and get spark that interest. Mm-hmm. So you gotta have like some special skills. Okay. Yeah, if you want to get that girl. So same thing with DJing. Like you have to pull this song. You have to find a way to move play this song and this song that they can move. You have to notice the crowd mm-hmm. and see what kind of crowd am I dealing with? Is it like older folks, younger folks, or mixture of that? Or is it more guys, more girls? Um, and then now you can analyze and see, okay, if, if, it's a, if we have a lot of women in the club, of course, play some, some songs which will make them move. Mm-hmm. Afrobeats, dancehall. Some R and B, some 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 really nice song that can dance, and once you get the women dancing, 
that's when you get the guys mm -hmm. waking up and be like, because they want to go and dance with the girls. Right. Yeah. If you see a lot of guys, like a reggae. You can't go wrong with reggae. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what else? I think also learning which the age group also matters. So mm -hmm. you can know if you're going to be playing some old school stuff or some new stuff. All right. Or some, um, you know, some you know, dog over to come as well. Like <laughs> you have to, <laughs> you have to know you you know you have to know your crowd, right? And also, sometimes you have no control. Sometimes you you put in a position where club, the sound system, they can't play loud music because of residential stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, if people will now be moving, right? Yeah. Yes, that's because you need that base to punch you so you can move. Yeah. But if it's not there, you're like, okay, maybe it's just a lounge, just mm -hmm. people chilling. So mm -hmm. just um, act accordingly. Well, okay. Yeah. Kenyans are near. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a, a, an audience that you would never risk playing for? I don't know. Um, I'm assuming, let's say, a heavy metal club. Would you do that? Is that a risk you would take? Good question. Heavy metal. Uh-huh. Um, I would love to play, but at the same time, I just know that I'm not too experienced with that. So, mm -hmm. and it's not something I listen to all the time. Okay. Um, so maybe I might not do it, mm -hmm. but I would love to experience it though. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's your process though? Like, you know, um, when you're about to do a gig, like how do you, how do you shorten the process, um, to getting people on their feet? Um, I think experience has really helped me just, uh -huh. you know, practicing with other crowds and everything. So usually in the DJ software, I have this fold, these crates or these folders where I know I have this certain set. It has, um, these certain songs. It has maybe Afrobeats and all that or hip hop and everything. And, um, so to sh being... Here in Kenya, mm -hmm. has kind of changed how I arrange my music. Mm -hmm. So I have a, I have a folder that just says, um, this certain club. Mm -hmm. So I know this club has a certain clients, mm -hmm. and people come there, and I'll arrange the songs over there. So I know every time I go to that club, I can play, play, play if. If I need to go to that folder, I'll go and get some songs I know they'll dance to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can use the same playlist or the same kind of songs in a different club too. Mm -hmm. But I just try to mix it up a little bit. Right. So to shorten it, I just try to have those sets ready mm -hmm. just in case. Mm -hmm. Usually I play through memory. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's just, usually it's just uh, impromptu on the go. Because... Mm -hmm. As much as you can prepare your set, mm -hmm. once you get there, it's a totally different thing. You're like, oh, I can't play this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't play this song. So, um, why, why, how, how, what tells you that you can't play a particular song for a particular crowd? The way they respond to certain songs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, when I'm DJing, I'm playing, I know. When I play this song, I have three other songs coming up right. in my, my head. My head. Mm -hmm. I already know, like, I want to take them. I usually try to tell a story. Okay. Beginning to the end. And the story is more like, a, it's like an ocean wave. Mm -hmm. It goes like this, it yeah. goes this, and yeah, it just goes up and down, but smoothly. Mm -hmm. Where, like, I'll take them to a high energy, mm -hmm. then just lower it a little bit, then take mm -hmm. them back. Okay. Because you can't keep them high all the they will, they will get tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I try, in my mind, I know like I'm going to start in this energy, go up here, take them down here, then go up again, then finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's mm -hmm. cool. So um, 
COVID did you a huge favor, yes. yeah. Um, which I mean, you know, I know there are a lot of negative effects. A lot of people lost their jobs, mm. you know. But for you, it was where you learned. You, you know, you 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 grew your career. Yes. So my final question for you is: What is it? What's life like now? You know, now that you've blown up and everyone knows you, like, what does a work week or a work month look like? Work week, work month. Um, it it. It's a bit different com- when I'm in Kenya and also when I'm in the States. Mm-hmm. When I'm in Kenya, like, it's um, it's every day there's something to do. Okay. Either there's an interview I have to go to, there's a meeting, mm-hmm. or I have to schedule this, um, doing some content for the mm-hmm. in- social media, mm-hmm. or let's say preparing my music, and then later on at night, go to the club, mm-hmm. uh, DJ, interact with the fans. Yeah, and uh, a Kenyan club that doesn't shut it doesn't down. shut down. <laughs> yes, have you slept at all this month? <laughs> <laughs> it's been rough. Okay, <laughs> it's been rough, but mm-hmm. um, I can't complain. It's a blessing because okay. now it's. Uh, I've noticed that the demand is so high. Where like they want to book me every day, but I, physically I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like okay. I wish I could, mm-hmm. but I need some few days to rest. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, Kenya. It's really busy, mm-hmm. and um, I like being busy. Yeah, and I enjoy it. So um, that's why I like to come to Kenya, mm-hmm. especially in December. Okay, get that, you know, work and get busy and everything. I like that. I enjoy that. When I go to the states, mm-hmm. usually my work week is um, most of my gigs are just on the, on Friday and Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Yeah, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm usually uh, now doing the behind the scenes. Right. Where preparing content, getting some music done, talking to clients, um, you know, uh, working on some projects where mm-hmm. I know it's going to come up, come about. Um, and also doing my mixes and also doing the live shows that I used to do. Yes. Um, that's where I get the time to do it. Mm-hmm. With the live shows, it helps me now to connect with the audience and mm-hmm. get more followings and, um, you know, just entertain them mm-hmm. because they enjoyed that during COVID. Yes. So I'd like to continue that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, also do other hobbies. I like to travel. I like to, um, I like to um, explore other things like, you know, um, painting. What? Yeah. Okay, that came from <laughs> left field. I did not see that coming. <laughs> so you paint? Uh-huh. I do. I uh-huh. do. Uh, I've been taking some classes uh, recently. Okay. Yeah. So something just to get away from the whole mm-hmm. um, DJing and everything in the industry because sometimes you need something to get you out of yeah. the space. So wait, what do you paint? Abstract, still life? What mm-hmm. do you what what's your area of speciality? Um abstract. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just started though. I'm not I'm not that great. Uh well, you know, mm. practice makes perfect. As yeah. you would know by now. Yes, because yes, you know, yes. with the DJing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um that is absolutely fascinating. Mm. I Actually, I have this one rule. Uh-huh. Um, which I started years, years back. I told myself Every single month, you gotta you have to try something new. Okay. Something that you've never done before. Something will make you uncomfortable. Yeah. Or anything like that. So every month, mm-hmm. it can be like just going to a different restaurant. Yeah. Going dancing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah! Instead of being the one who's making <laughs> yeah, <people's> <laughs> going <laughs> yeah. start dancing. Yeah. Going painting or something, or maybe uh, there's one time I flew a plane. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I I like to try th- different things just out of the box. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, now, in case you're wondering where to catch a DJ Shinsky show online, check out the social media handles that you see on your screen. Um, and I want to thank you very, very much for spending time with us today. I know you are an incredibly busy man. So I appreciate that. And I'm sure the audience does as well. Uh, we wish you a safe flight back. 
Thank um, you so much. And I'm pretty sure you have a gig to. Oh, you just said you have a gig tonight, yeah. so have a good one with that one. Thank you. We hope you make it to the airport, <laughs> <laughs> lest you find yourself in the club. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the time of your flight. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and we'll see you next week for another one just like this one.